Hello everyone, it's the Sister Roland and all I need is a few minutes to discuss this blog post that was written by Brittany Cooper and it was written on the ChristianCentury.org webpage and she wrote this back in November of 2021 and who is Brittany Cooper? She is a very well-known black author and she's a tenured professor at the Rutledge University. University. They also call her a cultural critic and she is a public intellectual according to Wikipedia. So a tenured professor, all that means is it's an indefinite position. So you have a permanent job where you cannot be fired unless it's like extraordinary circumstances. You basically have a job for life. So the title of the blog post is called Why I Came Back to Repentance. And she basically started off by saying how she was a Jesus freak. She would walk around with a what would Jesus do lanyard around her neck. And um, and at one point she had lost the lanyard and thought that was some type of spiritual meaning. According to her. And she talked about visiting a church that was not Baptist. Because she looked like she grew up in a Baptist church. And she said that the pastor said that he was not going to be preaching about fire and brimstone anymore. Because God had told him that he has been misrepresenting him. Just like so many pastors and preachers and different people that um, say that they speak of God. They do misrepresent God in their actions, in their ways, in the way that they talk. They do misrepresent God. And the fire and brimstone part, she said that, you know, and then of course his transparency, first of all, his transparency, the fact that he could say God told him that he's misrepresenting him and then he's telling the people that. So she admired that transparency. That was something she was not used to seeing, which is not which is something that not a lot of us see because not many pastors and preachers are transparent because they sometimes portray themselves to be perfect. They can do no wrong. They do no wrong. They see no wrong. So this is, that was something new for her. So she, she, uh, she was down with that. You know, she could understand that. And she was more open to listen to what he had to say because he was transparent but the thing is many of the pastors a lot of them are not rightly dividing the word of truth because in first john 3 and 3 we um, it says this hope the hope of the coming of jesus christ purifies us so we are supposed to preach about this hope because this is what purifies people because when you know of this hope you know Jesus come at any time or he can, I can go at any time. And the fact that I can go at any time, I cannot live any way that I want to live. I cannot do what I, whatever I want to do. I have to live according to the word of God. That's where I have to live. And you're not supposed to, yes, you're supposed to make people aware of hell because if you don't live according to the word of God, you won't be able to go to heaven. You won't be able to go to heaven because there's a standard to get into heaven. There's a standard to get in heaven, and that standard is Jesus Christ. And then we have, and then we have the instructions, which is the Word of God, to get there. So that was, that is where a lot of, probably a lot of things probably went wrong in the the teachings that she received because. She had a problem with repentance. She had a problem with um, fire and brimstone, always preaching about stuff. And then now she encountered this person that says that he's not going to do that. And she said that she met a progressive and gracious God. So that opened her up. And now she 
saw a progressive and a gracious God. God was always gracious. God has always been gracious. And even her, she quoted the same verse. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. She even quoted it in the, in this blog post. So what is progressive? A progressive is developing gradually or in stages. So you're, you know, changing and changing. But God say he does not change. He is the same. So this progressive, where did this progressive come, progressive God come from? It may be you who now have become progressive because now you're seeing a change because it's a lot of things that opened her eyes up after this encounter with this pastor. So God has his standards that we must uh, um, follow in order to obtain certain blessings. Um, of course, number one, to get into heaven, just like society have standards. If you want to become a lawyer, there's a standard. What is the standard? You have to go to school for a certain amount of years, and then you have to do um, pass the bar, of course, and then some people do, you know, apprentice. They work. They do some internships. So you have to, so you could get experience, of course. So you have to do that. Just like a doctor, you have to do go to school, and then you have to do residency, and you have to pass the state uh, um, some of the board exams. Just like a nurse, just because you feel like, oh, I feel like I'm a lawyer. I've been defending people all my life. I've been taking care of people all my life. I took care of my grandma. I take care of my granddaddy. I've been taking care of all my brothers and sisters. I feel like I'm a nurse. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna practice nursing. You can't do that. It's a standard. You, there are there are steps that you have to do in order to become a nurse, in order to become a doctor, in order to become a lawyer. Just like God, He has His standards. He has His standards that we have to follow. Why society can have standards, a school can have standards. They can have um, they, but God no, God you can't have the standards. No, you can't. You have to appeal to us. You gotta you gotta come down to our level, okay? Because you, the God back then, you have to conform to what's going on now. It doesn't work like that. Because like he, like you said, like she said, and like the Bible says, He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change. He does not change. So that is the standard. So her problem is, her main problem is the fact that where she grew up in the church. They were not rightly dividing the word of truth where a lot of churches, that's what they're doing. So she had this notion. She had this thinking. She had this ideology that she had to always list all of her sins. She had to list all of her sins and stuff like that. And then listing all of those sins made her feel unworthy, made her feel inadequate. So she had this inadequacy that followed her all the rest of her life because people did not um, preach the word of God as they were supposed to preach the word of God. So yes, you are supposed to um, ask God to forgive you of your sins and stuff like that. Some sins you do, you don't even know if you're doing them. Sometimes it's the Holy Spirit that reveals, you know, what you did was not right. So some things you're doing, you are, you don't, you're not even aware. So God told, tells us in the Bible that we are so if we keep sin in our heart so we are supposed to confess sin if we keep sin in our heart he will not hear us he will not be able to hear our other prayers that we would want to address at him to him he says um, sin makes puts a separation between him and us so sin is not that you supposed to, oh um, I'm missing all my sins and then I feel inadequate you are supposed to listen on your sin because number one, you don't want to have to give the enemy, the Satan, which is Satan, a foothold in your life, access into your life. And then, you know, when the enemy comes in your life, he comes to steal, kill and destroy. That's all he comes to do. He doesn't come. He doesn't come to do anything. Only Jesus says he comes. Jesus comes to have to bring you life and to bring you life more abundantly. So you confess your sins because you don't want that separation between you, you and God. You don't want God not to hear your prayers and you do not want the, um, Satan to have a foothold 
in your life. So this is what a lot of people don't push. They just say, oh, you need to ask God to forgive you. Uh, uh, if you don't forgive you, you're not going to have a relationship. They only push that part, but they don't push other things. This is why if you don't, if you don't confess your sins and then you don't have to one by who said that you have to say one by one everything that you did did some things you do but not every day one by one you have to say exactly who said that who said that did god tell you that did god reveal that to you that's a person who said that but did you this is what we do sometimes we uh, um of course we listen to the, the to the pastor but some stuff that's may be out of the person's opinion what we are supposed to do we go to god and we ask god this is what this person say. I didn't understand. Uh, uh, please help me to understand. We go to the source. The source, which is God. Because we, man fail. Men fail. Women fail all the time. But God never fails. And that's why we could always rely on him. Where we cannot, that's why he said, do not trust in man. You cannot put all of your trust in man. But you can definitely put all of your trust in God. So after hearing all of this and then going back to, you know, how she was raised in church that she was raised, she made a graven image of a progressive God, a God that is changing, changing to society, changing to conform to her or to conform to the black woman or to the white, um, white woman or the black man. She now sees a progressive God. And then after that, she said she began to see God as unconditional and loving. And all this is in the blog post. All this is there. So before she never saw God as an unconditional loving God. She never saw that until she had this encounter with this pastor. And this is all because of people taking scriptures out of context and not rightly dividing the word of truth. Because not, not a lot of people are studying to pro show themselves approved to preach the gospel. Just like some people say, um, some people um, were, were sent and some people just went. That's what it is. And then when these stuff happens, when the people don't write the divided word of truth, people get mad. And when people get mad, what do, do, they, what do they do? They either start a new religion. Because a lot of these religions, let's just like Pastor G. Craig always say, a lot of these religions out there, other religions out there, they got started because somebody got mad. It was something in the Bible that they didn't agree with. They got mad and then they started an, a, a new movement. Some people, when they get mad because of something in the Bible or something that they heard, they they stop serving God. They go another way. They, uh, uh, um, or they keep on going to church but then they have a form of godliness and deny the power deny the power to change the, that god can change them that god can restore them that god can open their eyes so that's what happens so even though she was a jesus freak but she never saw god as an unconditional unconditional loving god and she said also let me find what she said and she also said here, it says, I could not be in a relationship with a divine being who insisted that my daily or hourly cataloging of personal unworthiness was the proper pretext for a relationship. Where did you get that from? That, just like I said, stating your sins, cataloging your unworthiness is not a um, prere prerequisite to, for a relationship with God. It is to prevent you from being separated from God. And it's to prevent the, the devil from having a foothold in your life. To having access into your life. So a lot of these Ali, uh, and this lady is, has a great, uh, big following. And she's always on different platforms. And she, she, she calls herself a black feminist also. And she had these had this ideology and still probably had this have this ideology because now she thinks that oh i don't have to do that because um 
because uh, um, this because a lot of people was misrepresenting God. So I don't have to ask God forgiveness. Forgiveness. That's what those other people said. But I don't have to do that. No, you do have to do that because the Bible said that you have to do that. The Bible says that we have to confess our sins. We confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That means sins bring unrighteousness into our life. And those unrighteousness are the ones that make us feel unworthy and inadequate because we keep that we don't really confess them. And then sometimes we don't know. That's why we ask the Holy Spirit to search us. Like the Psalmist David says, he said, search me, O God, because we don't know and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Because we're human. We always going to have things in our lives that does not please God. But the Holy Spirit can bring them up to the surface. And we re repent. That means we change our mind. We don't do go that way anymore. Or we make an effort not to do that sin anymore. Not to do that thing that displeases God. And, and this is another th um, thing that she said here. It says, but surely we deserve a theology that does not ask to abnegate, which is reject, the self entirely in order to be in a relationship to God. And then she talks about black women cannot afford a self-negating faith. That cost is high. So what is theology? Theology is basically the study of the nature of God. And really religious belief so th many times the theology that we have that of the nature of God was what was placed um, the, 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 the thinking was placed in our minds by people going back not rightly dividing the word of truth making graven image being upset and then looking for something which is idolatry that's going to satisfy what they want to do and she says it's a lot of things that she said if i continue like um she did not want to be a spokesperson for the christian project which is imperialism sanctimony white supremacy and homophobia christian is to be christ-like is to be christ-like so some things are not Christian. They're not Christian. They might be religious, they some, but they're not Christian because to be Christian is to be Christ-like. So there was a lot of things that you, she said. One thing, the last thing I do have to say, I'm sorry where you grew up, young lady. They did not write the divided word of truth and they made you have this ideology of God. It made you stray away from God and you probably picked up a lot of teachings. And because he's used also the same person that says the nuclear nuclear family is not um, important for black thriving. So you picked up a lot of teachings because what it was supposed to uh, um, teach you the word of God to have the impact that you are having. Now your influence is being used to influence the masses through religion in the wrong way. I'm sorry that they, uh, um, whoever that pastor was, whoever those pastors was, did not rightly divide the word of truth from when you needed it. But that doesn't change God's standard. This is God's standards. It won't change. God's standards is in the word of God. And God is not a progressive God because he does not change. To be progressive, you have to change. You would have to change. And God placed certain standards in, the, in, his, in his word because he transcends time. He's not limited to time. So he can go to the past, present, future, and he knows what's best. That's why he left those for us to follow. See, that's why the Israelites got into a whole lot of problems because he had already put laws 
in place. This is what you're supposed to do. This is, and then because they, and he said to continuously teach it to each and every generation, which they did not do. That's why a lot of things happen because they did not follow the ancient landmarks. They did not follow those rules. So God's standard is God's standard. And the thing is, what is happening now, people are not rightly dividing God's standards in the way that they should be doing. And this is what's happening. People who have God, who have God has um, blessed with influence, but now the influence is being used to deceive many. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.